All right, all right. Welcome back to the homestead, and here we go. All right, now before we get this party started, if you watched my gas station video yesterday, do not make that gas station. Now you have to stay tuned. I'm going to tell you why in the next video or two, but just stay tuned. But do not copy what I did, okay? Don't do it. And I'll make a whole video explaining about it. So don't run out and buy it just yet, okay? Until I explain to you what's going on. Love you guys down in the comments section. And truth be told, I'm not here acting like a know-it-all, okay? Some of this stuff, you know, I'm learning as I'm going. And I do appreciate you guys leaving comments. I'm not hard-headed and I learn well, okay? But I also trust but verify. So anything you guys tell me in the comments section, I'm going to look into it. You guys had some good tips in there. So stay tuned for that, all right? But today we're going to talk about sheep. Sheep on the homestead. And what you're going to do if your lamb won't take a bottle. Um, here, let me talk to you for a second about it. All right, so if you're new to our channel, my wife and I live in a log cabin on 11 acres and uh, we raise and grow most of our own food. We're probably in the 90% area, okay? We do go out for a few staples and stuff like that. But for the most part, everything comes from the homestead. And we raise Katahdin sheep. These are what you call hair sheep. Um, they don't require any shearing and that's why we like them because we live off grid in our log cabin with no public utilities, no electricity or anything. So actually uh, shearing animals here on the homestead is a bit of a chore for us. We had some alpacas a while ago when we first got out here and we thought that would be really cool, but it turned out to be not very cool at all. <laughs> so we opted for the hair sheep. These are Katahdins. And these are really known for a couple of really good things. Let me go over it with you real quick, just in case you're interested in raising sheep on your homestead as you guys get started on your journey. Um, the Katahdins, A, don't need to be sheared because they're hair sheep. Now, what they will do is rub along your fences and they'll, you know, kind of force the hair off of them. It's basically shedding, okay? And they'll do it along your fence lines. And a lot of guys don't like it on the fence lines. A lot of my Amish friends do not like the hair sheep and the fence lines. <laughs> <laughs> but it's no problem. And uh, you can actually use that for fire starter too if you go gather it up. So it's dual purpose. Um, so they don't need shearing, so that's good. It's low maintenance. And they do really good in the heat and the humidity. We live in the Midwest where it's very hot and humid in the summertime. And uh, these guys do a really good job maintaining themselves, keeping their weight on and staying healthy. And they're also um, not as apt to get, you know, uh, parasites really bad. Uh, if you get wool sheep, um, you'll have to dock their tails, which I don't have to do on these Katahdins. Because what happens is when they poop, okay, the poop gets stuck to the wool, creates a problem back there, and then they start getting uh, flies and all this other kind of stuff and infections, and that's where you get a lot of problem um, with the hair, with the um, wool sheep, okay? The hair sheep, you don't have that problem, so that's another good benefit. And they really put on meat well. Uh, they grow fast, okay? Uh, within a year, you probably can get um, a lamb up to about 80 pounds, you know, or good. Mrs. Turkey's here to see us too. She's been acting really good and being nice. And our breeding pair of turkeys is actually really working out well too. Mr. Turkey just fluffs up and walks around all proud all day. And uh, Mrs. Turkey's been laying eggs. We're not sure if she's getting fertilized. She hasn't really started laying on them, but we are getting a lot of turkey eggs. So we should start seeing some breeding pair action pretty soon. Sometimes I can get Mrs. Turkey to sit down. She wants to have breeding. <laughs> and this kind of stimulates what a turkey would do to her. Sometimes she'll sit down and start fluffing out her wings. It's kind of a joke around here. I'm kind of her boyfriend. She always follows me around and then she picks on Stacy. <laughs> All right, so it's about time to feed this lamb. Um, when we first started, the lamb would not take the bottle for anything, okay? Um, it's been a little bit, so we got it transitioned into the bottle, but I'm gonna show you guys real quick um, what you have to do if your lamb, calf, kid, um, won't take a bottle. So this is gonna work all the way through all of them, all right? And no matter if you're raising goats or sheep or cows. Okay. So I'm gonna show you guys right now how to get it going, because it has to eat right away, right? To start building its strength and to get the nourishment into its body. And if it's gonna reject the bottle, you're gonna have a hard time. So you're gonna have to go to step one. And then after that, we're gonna show you how she's uh, latching onto the bottle now, okay? So here we go. Okay, so what you're gonna have to do if your lamb isn't gonna bottle feed right off the bat, and sometimes they're like that because they get real particular about the nipple and the way it feels in their mouth, and 
we tried to put the nipple way down in there because you want to kind of cause a gag reflex. So when you get the nipple in, it's kind of like, eh, and then they start suckling and then it mimics the mother's nipple, right? So we were trying to put the nipple in the mouth of the lamb. She was rejecting it, turning, spitting, won't take it. And we could not get her to take the bottle at all. So then you have to move to the catheter. So you can pick these up at your local vet or any farm and home store. Um, a lot of them carry the calf ones and this is the sheep one because it's a little bit smaller. So we just jammed down to the vet. We got this from them real quick. And then we also got a syringe because you're going to need a syringe to feed it into the tube. Okay. And you'll have to do your homework on figuring out your CCs, how much food that your lamb is going to need, or if you're doing a kid or if you're doing a calf, you know, so you're going to have to do some homework. This video is just to help get you through that the bottle's not being taken by the baby and how to keep it alive so then you can get it onto the bottle, okay? So what you're gonna wanna do here is you're gonna wanna take the catheter on the open end here. You can see that's the end that's designed to go into the stomach because it has the holes there. This is the end that's designed to go with the uh, syringe, okay? And then you just put your fingers right here in the mouth. And when you put it in, you want it kind of pointing down. See how she's kind of taking it in? You don't wanna force it, that's for sure and you stay to the left of their mouth. They're backed into you, and you stay to the left. So you have the back side of the baby up against you. You're holding the neck slightly elevated, and then you're gonna just kind of feed the tube, and you're gonna stay on the left side of the mouth, your left, as it's backed into you, okay? And that is gonna take it right down the esophagus and into the stomach. Okay, the right side will take you into the lungs and that's not good. Don't force it. As see as she's chewing it and she's gagging a little bit, I'm just slowly feeding it down in there. Okay. And then what you'll do is you'll just take your syringe, put it right here, and then slowly press in. So your plunger will be out and then you'll slowly just kind of plunge it in, okay? Now I've seen some folks do uh, like a gravity feed, and the problem is if you're doing like a milk replacer that they get pretty thick. So it'll be hard for it to gravity feed through the tube and it could clog up in the uh, end here. And you don't want to force it in too fast, you know, just kind of go nice and slow. That's the way we've been doing it, and it worked really good. Then of course when you're done, you want to clean these up with some hot water, get them ready for your next feeding. Um, and that's worked really, really good. Like I say, just make sure as you're holding the neck, you'll feel the catheter go down the left side and you just wanna make sure that it stays on the left side and you're feeding it as she's kind of taking it down. You don't wanna force it down there, okay? So that's your tip on this. That'll get you started. Once you get this started and then she starts getting the reflex and she starts getting what's going on, I keep saying she because this one's a you, um, you'll start figuring it out and then you'll be able to introduce the bottle after a little bit. It's the same thing with the bottle. You're going to need to open up the mouth using your two fingers, open it up, and then get that bottle in there. You know what I mean? Make, get that nipple deep in there, and then she'll get on to it. All right? It, it takes a little bit. You could get frustrated. Just hang in there. Because she wants to eat and live. Um, she's just waiting to figure it out. So now we're going to show you guys how she's taking a bottle. And I think our uh, granddaughter's here, and she's all excited about feeding herself. We'll go get them, get the bottle, and we'll watch old uh, Elsa here. Uh, drink from her bottle. What we do now is to simulate the um, mother. We basically have her come under our leg here. This works out pretty cool. And then she goes right at it now. Before we couldn't get her to do this at all. You want to hold the bottle? Yeah. This is my granddaughter. You got to hold it down here. And you got to hold it up a little bit. Isn't she cute? Yeah. Don't let her don't mouth. take it away. It she has to mouth. have it. <laughs> so you always want to make sure that when you're feeding them the bottle too, that their head is up at a, you know about 90 degrees or something, you know. Just make sure that it's kind of simulating them going to the teat. See her tail's wagging too. That's a great sign. Do you want to hold the bottle? You gotta hold it down here. There you go. And keep it up kinda. Yeah. See how she's punching it? <laughs> That's awesome. Good stuff. You'd like one of these at your house, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can feed her all the time. Awesome. Okay, 
we gotta take it away because otherwise you'll get air in there. Give it one more little swivel. Is that how you drink your bottle? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're in charge of it. You gotta make more because she's still hungry. You gonna go home and make more? Go to the cabin and make some more. <laughs> you think I was kidding about Mrs. Turkey, didn't you? <laughs> well, that's how you take care of a lamb that won't take a bottle. First, you have to start off with a catheter. Make sure that you stay to the left as it's backed up to you, okay, the left side. And actually, if, if you have your hand on the neck there, you'll actually feel that catheter slipping down the neck. Just go nice and slow and don't force it, okay? And you'll be able to tell if you're in the right pipe because, you know, you have the two pipes. You have one for the esophagus and one for the lungs. You don't want to get it in the one for the lungs, okay? So just make sure you go nice and slow and you're watching for the gag reflex and then you'll get that catheter down in there. It depends on what kind of animal you're uh, doing it with. You know, like the lamb, obviously, that catheter is about that long. Once we're in about this far, you can start feeding. Uh, Macau is going to be a little different. Um, so you'll just, be able, you'll just want to keep checking that, engaging how far down in there. You don't have to actually go all the way to the stomach, but you want to make sure you get past the bowels and get into the well, esophagus deep enough where it's going to go into the stomach. Right? Now the one thing that I didn't really talk about was the colostrum. Okay, Colostrum is totally vitally important for your animal, your newborn, to get on the homestead, even if it's a newborn baby. So all of these animals out here require colostrum um, as their first kind of immune booster. Okay, So the lamb had uh, the mother, the ewe, and that ewe was able to give this lamb here the colostrum that it needed to kind of get it started on one teat. The other teat had the issue, okay? So it did get the colostrum. Now what you can do, um, there's a couple ways you can get colostrum. You can buy it at the store. Um, as you have animals that are having babies, you can go out and take one teat and take the colostrum plug and that milk out of there and then you could freeze it so you could use it at a later time. And you know, like they have replacements and stuff like that. So you can buy the colostrum, you know, at the store. Um, but I would suggest if you have livestock and you have the chance to go ahead and take some off of a teat and then freeze it so you have it, you know, available for you if you do need it, okay? Now the other thing is with the bottle, you could also put a little black strap molasses on it. Sometimes if they won't take that bottle naturally, like just right off the bat, if you put a little black strap molasses on it, they'll actually take it in because it's kind of sweet and it's good for them. You just put a little dab on there and see if that works. And if that doesn't work, then of course you're going to have to move on to the catheter. Okay? So that's what's going on around here. I'm just trying to take care of my sheep. I got my baby being fed. I'm going to go work on the outdoor shower like I told you guys in a previous video. And also, again, if you just popped in and maybe you missed the front part because you weren't paying attention, do not make the gas station that I made in yesterday's video. I am going to do a video about it and I'm going to show you guys some of the issues, okay? Some of the problems. All right, I'm going to correct some things. It's a still a great idea and there's nothing really wrong with it functionally. There's just a few regulations and stuff that I wasn't too keen on until you guys hit me to it. So I'm going to go over all that stuff with you. Just give me a couple of videos and I'll revisit that gas tank. But it's sitting there. It's full of gas. It's going to work fine. I'm going to tell you all about it in the next video coming up. Ha! <laughs> the suspense is killing me. Don't do it. But go get your gas and have it on hand. You can put it in five gallon jugs or whatever you have right now as far as containers that are legal and just get that gas on the side, have it ready to go so you're ready in case you need it, right? Don't wait for me to make the second video, all right? All right, hang on a second. So many updates coming for you guys. We're gonna be talking about the bees pretty soon. There they are right there. How they made it through the winter time, how they're doing now. We got all these updates coming for you guys. Don't forget, I'm going to talk about that gas station. <laughs> oh, man. So we got a lot of stuff going on here. Today we're going to keep moving, though. I got to get this shower fixed. And uh, thanks for stopping by the homestead. We got the grandkids up. It's kind of hard for them right now, you know? We're trying to keep things normal. All right? Thanks for coming by the homestead. If you got any questions about sheep or anything like that, just leave them down below. We try to answer all of our comments. Thanks for stopping by. And thanks for watching that gasoline video. I think you guys might have helped me out just a little bit. All right, see you on the next one.
Hold it up, hold it up.